In the last section, we spoke a little bit about the application that we're going to be putting together, the video conversion app. Let's take a little bit of time to install the boilerplate that we're going to use for this project, and then we'll discuss some of the big challenges that we're going to have as we work through this project. So chances are you already have the boilerplate downloaded for this project. Remember that a little bit ago, when we kicked off the Tasky application, we had cloned that one Git repository. Inside of that Git repository was a folder called boilerplates, and inside of there was the directory convert. So I'm going to change into that convert directory and then install all the dependencies for the project by running npm install. Now, if you do not see this convert project right here, or this convert folder inside of the boilerplates folder, you can always re-download the entire project by opening up the GitHub repository. Remember that this was at github.com slash Stephen Greider slash electron code. So you can re-download or re-clone the project, go into the boilerplates directory, and then find the convert project inside of there. So again, only have to do this if for some reason you don't have the code around from when we had last cloned this project. All right, looking back at the terminal, so our npm install is running, we're just gonna let that go for a bit. While that's running, we'll talk a little bit about some of the big challenges that I think we're going to see as we work through this application. So let's pull up a little diagram here. Okay, so let's walk through this step by step and talk about some of the big challenges. First thing, let's get some content to appear on the screen. So we've gone through this process several times now. How do we get content to appear on the screen? We always show a browser window object. So we're going to wire up a brand new browser window, and inside of there, we will tell the browser window that it needs to load up some index.html document. And that HTML document will be responsible for showing some amount of content on the screen. So this kind of goes back to the basics of Electron with how we put together browser windows and load up HTML documents into them. The next big challenge is going to be the drag and drop interface. Now, when you saw that drag and drop interface in the application mockup, and I'm talking about this thing right here, how I said, yeah, we wanna be able to drag and drop video files onto this. Well, you might be thinking, like kind of a natural feeling might be any drag and drop, anything working with the file system, surely that's going to be a part of Electron. And the answer to that is, well, no, not quite. The drag and drop system has already been implemented by using the boilerplate package inside the React side of this application, which is what we just installed and are installing some dependencies for right now. So in this last section, as we're working through it, you're going to see several different locations where we start to work much more closely with the React and Redux side of this application. Now, if you're familiar with React and Redux, fantastic. You're gonna learn a lot about how to uh, integrate React and Redux with Electron. If you're not familiar with React or Redux, that is absolutely, let me, let me make sure it's really clear right now, it is not a problem if you're not familiar with React and Redux. You don't have to be familiar with those to get a lot out of this application and continue on. It's just kind of a nice bonus if you are familiar with them, but again, definitely not required. So the entire drag and drop interface is already implemented by the React side of this application. And I'll be sure to point out the location inside the code base where that drag and drop is implemented so you can make use of that similar technique on your own projects if you so choose. Now the next thing we need to be aware of is that whenever a file is dropped onto the application or kind of received, we want to show a different window to the user. And so that's kind of talking about the transition between the screen on the left and the screen on the right. So we had said that when the application first boots up, we're going to show this file loader over here. And then once a user adds a single video, we're gonna to transition to this other screen over here. And so that's what that challenge is talking about. Now this is another little piece of functionality that is taken care of by the React and Redux side. And again, this is an area where I'm going to kind of point out very specifically where this occurs so that you can use a similar technique on your own React applications, again, if you so choose. Okay, Continue on. continuing on. So once a video file is loaded up into the application and it's waiting to be converted, we need to somehow communicate to the user the duration of the video and like the file format, the file name, all that kind of good stuff. Now we've already taken care of interacting with the video files in the past by using the FFmpeg CLI. And so we're going to use that CLI again in this project 
to load up some details like the video duration, file type, all that kind of good stuff. So this is going to be a little bit of a throwback to the first section in the course when we were working and kind of playing around with the FFmpeg CLI. Similarly, for the actual conversion process to actually convert the video from one file type to another, again, we're going to make use of the FFmpeg CLI. So again, we don't have to manually figure out how to work with the video file codecs or anything like that. We're going to make use of this external program to help us actually convert the video files. Now remember that as we show or as we convert a video, we want to show some type of progress bar to the user to kind of communicate, hey, conversion process, here's how far along we are. And so again, this is going to be a task where as we kick off the FFmpeg CLI to start the conversion process, we're going to monitor that process and we're going to watch to see how far through the conversion process it gets. Whenever the process updates and say, hey, we're now 50% done converting this video, we're going to somehow take that feedback from that CLI, communicate it back into the React side of the application, and get some progress bar to show up in the screen. So again, a little bit of a tie between FFmpeg and the React side of our application. Okay, so again, this is going to be a really fun project because we're going to build a very useful application. We're also going to get a good idea of how to interact React and Redux with Electron. Remember that we only need to focus on that if you are already familiar with React and Redux. Again, if you're not, don't sweat it. We're still going to have a good time. And we're also going to get a really good sense of how to communicate from some CLI running application over to the React side of our application. So a lot of good challenges here, a lot of good places to learn stuff, and definitely an interesting application to work on. So let's take a quick break. We're going to come back in the next section, and we're going to start looking at the boilerplate package that we installed. So see you in just a minute.